Brace your legs up and try to squeeze into those assless chaps. It's time for the chairquisition this week. Or this is this is where we take a game. We tell you if it launches, how well it performs, how the graphics are, and how it controls. Then we rate it on a scale from one to four chairs on a pass fail category or basis for all those categories. And then step two, we tell you how, what we thought of the game. We rate that arbitrarily on a scale from one to four chairs. Uh, there's no pass fail. There's only fail. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Full Throttle Remastered from Double Fine Productions and Shiny Shoe. It's done on, I think it's it's a modified version of the Scum Engine. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Send us some hate mail. You're wrong. Uh, you can pick it up for about 15 bucks. Uh, originally released by LucasArts in 1995, Full Throttle is a classic graphic adventure game from industry legend Tim Schafer telling the story of Ben Throttle, butt-kicking leader of the biker gang, the Polecats. Uh, we, we bought this for ourselves, so we don't have to disclose anything. Suck it, Tim. Even though you gave us space space for free secretly that one time, I don't know how that worked. <laughs> like four uh, copies of it. I know, right? Um, so let, let, let's let's get into this. How, how did it run on your end, uh, then? Testing it uh, for the beautiful people, for the masses on eighteen oh four LTS. Taking that one for the team. Um, Ryzen 7, 1700, 980, 16 gigajoules of RAM, all that fun stuff. No issues. I mean, I kind of expect that from Double Fine. Going to run out of the box, which it did. Performance-wise, you really got two options. Uh, I mean, it's going to run solid 60 at 720p or whatever it expands to, which I'm guessing is 2160p on this end. Um, that's about it. For us controls, you point, click, and you kind of pray during the combat sessions, man. Um, nothing to complain about, except like during this part, what you're seeing on the screen right now. It's called driving. Oh, fuck. fuck that part. How about Fedora? How's that working for you? Well, I tried it on two different Fedoras. Uh, on Fedora 28, it launches, and on Fedora 29, it launches. Um, performance at 1080. So I tried this on the um, on both the R7 2700U with the Vega 10 GPU and uh, the i7 6700K with the GTX 1080 Ti. Both are hold 60 um, at the maximum resolutions. I don't think uh, the it's uh, the all the graphics or whatnot are as remastered at UHD because I definitely saw some pixels when I maximized the screen. Um, and yeah, like uh, like like Wonder Boy uh, Dragon's Trap, you can switch between old and new graphics on the fly. Uh, the audio also switches from uh, stereo to mono too. Control wise, yeah, you click on stuff. I was almost tempted to ding at a chair because in windowed mode, if you play it as presented. There's some stuff that you just can't click on until you full screen because you need to be over that exact right pixel. Talk about that a little bit more. Also, yeah, those bike segments can eat a bag of dicks. Yeah, I, I'm very familiar with that cinematic. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll give it four chairs, though. Empty. Yeah, so um, I ran the Steam version. I also ran the GOG version through Lutris, and both of them ran flawlessly on my... Uh, Kubuntu 18.04 LTS with the uh, Ryzen 1700X and the 1060. No problems at all in terms of uh, getting it to run. No problems at all in terms of the graphics. They, or the performance, I should say. Um, how could a game like this not do 60 frames per second? Life finds a way, man. I mean, the cinematics are 48 FPS. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's what they were rendered at what do you what do you want the um update here actually um they did a really good ted or not ted talk a uh, gdc talk oliver who was the lead programmer for double fine um and the the talk is not specifically about full throttle i think it's about um day of the tentacle and um what's the other one that they did grim fandango but he also talks a lot about the technology that they use in their modified scum to have the old version of the game and the updated graphics all running at the same time, which is kind of the, I don't know. That's the whole point of the remastered edition. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as far as controls go, it's a point and click adventure game. Like uh, if we need to explain that to you, then you're probably not going to like this game. On a scale of one to four. Yeah. Oh, I would totally give it four. There we yeah, go. No doubt. We got it. On Mazel there. tov. Yeah. All right. Well, there there you go. It, it works extra great on Ubuntu. Works pretty well on Fedora. Good times. Up, up next, Ben, did you have fun? Hey, man. Check it out. Let's go all the way back to the Dark Ages. The DOS Ages, even 1995, where I still had a DOS partition. And most importantly, I had a copy of Full Throttle. That was the thing. It wasn't my first adventure game. I was never really into the genre. The one that got me hooked originally was this... Thing called Phantasmagoria. 
And I was like, all right, maybe maybe there's something to this uh, point and click adventure shit. And I decided to have a go with this. Uh, however, this game, unlike Phantasmagoria, didn't feature the cringe worthy, cringe inducing stuff that made you want to close your eyes and just click through blindly the FMV shit. Uh, no, this is animation. It was new hotness. And even way back then, this was also a really simple game, even at the time, and it was wicked linear. A simple, simple person like me could figure it out. Uh, I don't remember much from my initial playthrough, but I do recall it being entertaining. I, You know, you can kind of go back and like, I remember having a good time with this. So if we're going to fast forward 25 years, here we are again. I'm sitting here with an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, 3D graphics, more RAM than my PC had hard drive space. And let's give it a go, man. Out of the box, it's your standard Double Fine remastered. You get your new graphics, restored sound, and sometimes, like this, a commentary track. That's what it delivered. It supports all three of those. And they didn't dick around with the gameplay, as is tradition. So what am I looking for uh, for my $14.99? Man, give me some entertainment, some fun. Probably not nostalgia, because, you know, I got to go with entertainment. I'm kind of immune to the nostalgia bullshit. But it did manage to deliver the entertainment. Uh, even with the hella obtuse puzzles, man, those were things for a different time. And that ass-eating combat that you've seen me fuck around with and get killed to death repeatedly. Not really killed, but delayed. Uh, I managed to cock around for about two solid hours. And I only had the inter had to ask the internet twice, how do I unfuck this situation? Because I couldn't figure it out. Maybe I... I I could have most definitely have figured it out if I didn't have access to the internet and fuck all to do when I was a teenager. Um, at the end of the day, take that shot. Was it worth that $14.99? Was that trip worth it? Kind of yes and no. I'm going to say yes for being able to revisit a classic. And I really, really fucking enjoyed being able to switch between the original and this new hotness. I mean, I liked looking, you know, what they did creatively to expand it. From a 4x3 to a 16x9, well, they had to add some shit in. And I'm going to say yes again for including commentary. So I learned things like uh, the sound designer had to drive with a microphone hanging out of his fucking car in order to get those bump sounds. Uh, but I'm going to say no for not fixing the FSM damn awful combat. Because that's where I tapped out. What you're watching right here. I just got sick of it. I was like, no more. I'm done. I'm done with my trip. So, you know kind of a mixed bag but i'm going to say i definitely had two chairs worth fun with i'll say check it out definitely if it's on sale mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I, I never played full throttle back in the 90s i i remember having a friend uh nikita who was obsessed with this and he told me all about it um and now that i get a chance to play it i mean i i don't, I don't have the nostalgia associated with this and it's just another point and click adventure it's it's seinfeld syndrome right where Seinfeld was very revolutionary for its time, but then everything afterwards takes from that and riffs on it and improves it. So I, I'm looking looking back. I can see I can see some of the strengths, but it's not like mind blowing or revolutionary. I like the soundtrack and the remastered FMVs look good. Although there's one part in, right at the beginning where they drive over uh, what's his name's car, and I'm like, wow, this straight up looks like something out of South Park. Um, and uh my one my one real issue with with the with the gameplay here is that it's not necessarily hard to figure out what you need to do but sometimes the game fights you on make, letting you do it so two examples of this stand out um right at the very beginning siphoning gas i understood what i needed to do i was presented with a hose a gas can and i have a thing where i can suck i can put my mouth on things so clearly this game wants me to siphon gas from this vehicle that i have right here how i do that I had to look that up because apparently uh, playing it in a windowed mode, getting the gas can requires you to mouse over the exact pixel in order to do that. And I had to I had to full screen and look for it after like driving myself nuts trying to like, how, how do how do I siphon gas? I know I need to do this. Um, and I, I eventually settled on how to do it. The second one was uh, finding what's her face in the dumpster because I knew that area existed. I knew I probably needed to go there, given that all the other areas didn't have anything for me. But unless I moused over that exact pixel that let me go behind the bar, it would not let me progress. And that was really annoying. Um, beyond that, yeah, the, the, the story's fun. I can, I can see it building up to stuff. There's there's clearly some very good writing here. Um, it's very 90s kids friendly, but they, 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 they do what they can do. Uh, I, the commentary was interesting. 
And yeah, I, I'm with Ven. The bike combat in this can just eat shit. I can't figure out the special sauce. I wailed on some guy's head with the fucking tire iron, and then I died. I'm not sure how that exactly worked. I'm w whatever. That's that's where I tapped out after about eight tries of this. I'm just like, no, I don't care enough. I'll give it a solid two. It if you haven't if you're into graphical adventure games and you've never played Full Throttle for some reason, maybe look at picking this up because it's it's a very high quality remaster. But that, that's about all I can say for it. Empty, you love this game. Go suck its cock. Oh, I, I do love this game. Um, I got this in a combo pack with Loom and uh, The Dig, I believe, sometime back in the 90s on CD-ROM. And it was by far the greatest of the LucasArts games. And I would say it's probably better than my favorite Sierra game, Space Quest. I'm sorry, Roger Wilco. But then... Um, out badasses you to put it mildly um <clears throat> that said this is definitely a 90s adventure game if you didn't like 90s adventure games you're probably not gonna like this and uh if you don't know what a 90s adventure game is you're probably not gonna like this either because the form has not aged very well um if if that doesn't mean you can't appreciate this game. Go on YouTube and watch a playthrough of it. Just watching a playthrough is amazing because it's such a cinematic game with great music, great voice acting, a good story. I mean, they literally have Mark Hamill as the bad guy. Yes, you, uh, you this is something we be... talked about earlier is listening to the Joker throughout the entire game. It's Rip Burger, Rip Burger, yeah, yes. Right. Yeah, it's just so well done. And the, you know, the production back, especially in the 90s, the production values on this game were just, you know, ludicrous. Um, it wasn't available on floppies because it was talky. The whole thing was talky. I mean, basically, there's like movie segments spread out through the whole thing. Um, but, I saw you an know, interesting if, thing when they were talking about how they had to do the game and moving the pixels back in the day. But that's how they got away with it. They're like, we could do a lot of animation if we do a bunch of jump cuts. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah. That, that, and doing that, stuff that is, like only very... updating parts of the screen mm -hmm. and all sorts of mm -hmm. tricks that they had to do back then. Oh, oh yeah. J jump cuts is very much the the crux of the cinematic direction here. Is yeah. But it's a great game. It's a lot of fun if you like adventure games. If you've played through it, you know, ten times like I have, it's always fun to go back and just like smash through it because you can go through the whole game in five hours if you know what you're doing. It's not. It, it would be less than that if there weren't so many like cinematic sequences interspersed through the whole thing but that's really the fun of it is that it's it's kind of like kind of like playing a movie except that it's not terrible phantasmagoria fmv it's um, not david cage insanity either <laughs> yeah well it's it's lighthearted. it's a bit of a romp um all the pieces are there it's it's a great you know 90s adventure game mm. it's nothing more than that though all right, get us the hell out of here.